There are a number of obstacles for India right now. Some of the biggest ones are uh, India needs to develop its infrastructure. Um, it needs to urbanize its economy. Um, and it needs to attract foreign investment. Um, and it's, it's working on all of these things. Uh, Narendra Modi has made a priority of, of uh, in investing huge sums of money in infrastructure. Of course, uh, foreign companies are flocking to India, and every global company around the world right now has a, an India strategy of some kind as they pivot away from China and look to diversify their supply chains. Um, but there are a lot of obstacles ahead for India. I mean, you know, growth is really not where it needs to be right now. Uh, uh, you know, many economists say for India to sort of really capture the growth crown from China, um, it needs to get economic growth up to around 8 percent, even 9 percent or higher. And these are levels that, of course, China enjoyed for much of its recent history. Um, and India is, is not quite there yet. The government right now is targeting around 7 percent for growth. Um, if you sort of peel back the the, the curtain there a little bit, you know, the, the, the current growth rate is, is really around around 6 percent or so. So um, India, of course, has a lot of promise. Uh, a lot of investors are turning there, but, um, you know, still some obstacles that, that need to be overcome. And if India does manage to overtake China, what's the significance of that, apart from boosting Modi's ego? Yeah, well, it's it's a it's a great question. Of course, that is one that is one major outcome that you'll get from it. Of, of course, and this is hugely important right now as as a voting gets underway in India in just in just a couple of weeks. Um, but more significantly, and this was this was really the issue we tried to explore in our story today, is um, what happens if if India overtakes the growth crown. Now, you just have to look at China. Um, as an example for, for what it means. Now, China has, for the last several decades, largely been the driver of global economic growth, been the incremental contributor to the bulk of the world's growth. Now, what did that mean? It meant, it meant that global investors all flocked to China. It meant that China was the driver of capital markets activity. Um, it meant that China was the magnet for foreign investors and foreign multinational companies looking for growth, looking to participate in that market. Uh, for a long time, you know, China, we, we all sort of operated under this assumption that China was going to continue to have that, um, to carry that mantle. And we now see, you know, mm. since the end of the pandemic, that China has really struggled to produce that growth. Um, and now another, mm. so there's many eyes on India to see if, if India can be that next driver for growth.